Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. And I'm here, especially in, in light of all these recent events, I'm here to talk about the difference between being loyal to one's country and being unintentionally and unknowingly loyal to the corporate machine. Because we see a lot of that going on, don't we? Um, we see a lot of very, very well intended, very caring patriots out there that they just want, you know, what's best for everybody. You know, they they want to bring America back. They want to bring the world back into stability. They they want all the all the criminality and all the all the nonsense to be done away with. So you've got a lot of really good caring people out there that want to do the right thing. Um, you know, they love the earth, they love America, um, they love humanity, they believe in, you know, freedom and equal human rights and, you know, all the stuff that, you know, we all have the right to and that should be the case, but seeing as, you know, society has been based on, you know, all this, all this corporatism, you know, we got Common Core and no child left behind and all this other crap that's doing nothing but narrowing people well simultaneously you know there's all, all the fear stuff oh ebola and isis and nuclear war and blah this that da 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 da, da. and it really messes with people's heads because people forget they aren't robots you know they have emotional and psychological thresholds and when you pass the the threshold of anything you know it breaks it snaps it malfunctions kind of like if you overtask a computer what happens it gets overheated it starts to slow down um programs start to start to malfunction you know it's a big mess and it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the computer per se it doesn't mean that you know the the computer is bad or evil or whatever you know it just means that it's being pushed beyond its capacity and you know the same can be said you know with a car like you know it, it, most cars have governors inside of them to prevent you from going beyond a certain speed so that you don't burn out the engine because most people are not auto mechanics most people are not fully fluent with the the capabilities of that engine so they don't know when too much for too long it's just too much and so you know they can burn out their transmission or just you know any any number of of crazy malfunctions that you know are just not cool and in our current society we're taught to lash out and shake our fists and i mean really it, it it's all we've grown up knowing how to do I know it's all I grew up knowing how to do. I mean, we can't operate outside of what we know unless we're willing to learn to expand beyond what we know. And that's where free will choice is kind of a, a blessing and a curse at the same time. Because if, we're, if we don't want to be willing to expand beyond what we know, and comfort zones are, are not what we like, it's just what we're used to. And if our comfort zone is misery and, and, and death and, you know, certain ways of thinking, then the idea of, of anything positive is just going to seem like, oh, airy-fairy, new agey, or fundamentalist Christian, or, or whatever, you know. Uh, you know, those people are going to look at it like, dude, what are you smoking? This world is negative. It's filth. It's crap. It's the way it's always been. It's the way it's always going to be. What are you talking all this positive stuff? You're... You're, you're delusional, you know, you're just setting setting yourself up for a fall and, you know, all this and that. But even Einstein said you can't solve a problem using the same thinking that went into it. And Einstein's definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again while expecting different results each time. Isn't that exactly what we do? Whether we're talking about um, the political structure and, you know, the globalists and, and their way of thinking or whether 
but whether you're talking about anything, um, you know, anything within society, all of our belief systems about about how we're taught, like you know, oh, if you try hard enough, you'll succeed. Well, what about the fly that tries really hard to push through the glass, right? It's trying and it's trying and it's trying. But if you open the door so that the fly can fly out, that's not within the fly's paradigm. The fly is going to keep trying to push through the, the glass, push through the glass, push through. And it's going to try until it dies. It's just going to end up a corpse on, on your windowsill. And you know we've all we've all seen that time and time again, and that is where humanity has been, and we are finally starting to recognize it and go, dude, what the fuck have we been doing? Oh my god, this is stupid. But there's still a lot of people doing the whole fly in the window thing. Now, I'm going to lead into patriotism with this, but of course, I want to establish some. Um, certain frame of reference points first because let's face it language is very limited and you could say one or two sentences about anything and you could try to make it as intelligent and as nice and as civil and as simple and however you're trying to frame it so that everybody's going to take it exactly as you meant it and trying to avoid all sorts of drama and problems but you know that's a lost cause it's never going to happen because we are so locked into our paradigms and, and locked into viewing the world as a, a world of words that you know you say something someone takes it a different way than what you intended you have no hope whatsoever of trying to get them to see that you meant it in a different way the only thing you can really do is just respect someone's right to feel how they feel about it. All you can do is say, well, no, I didn't mean it this way. I meant it that way. Um, I know there's no convincing you of that. You have your mind made up. So all I can do is just respect your right and your freedom to view this in, in the way that you're viewing it. And then, you know, you're setting a positive example. You're in a negative situation, but, you know, you're putting a positive spin on it and just being like, look, all I've got left to do right now is just respect your rights and uh, because that's the person I want to be. It has nothing to do with, oh, I'm not going to respect your rights if you're not respecting mine. That's like a toddler having a tantrum, and that is Nazism. You know, let's just be point blank about it. So, yeah, um... So the first thing that I'm going to show you to establish some frame of reference, and I've used this in other videos before, Removing Mental Malware by Larkin Rose. This video is awesome. It's like one of the most epic, badass, you know, videos on the net, in my opinion. And I'm going to share that with you guys again. And um, then I'm going to explain what this video has to do, or, well, I'm not sure which which way my, my little video window screen is, is pointing here. I'm probably seeing it in reverse, but yeah. What this video, it's it's there, it's there. Um, it's one of those directions, wherever the hell it is. Um, where Larkin Rose is, you know, up there and yeah, with the microphone and stuff. So I'm um, going to show you that, and then I'm going to explain what it has to do, you know, with this with Einstein and with patriotism and all that. So bear with me got to put in all the frame of reference points because like i said words are just words without all the frame of reference points any of you have way more of a potential of taking my words to exactly what i'm not saying <laughs> so just going to establish some frame of reference it's a really cool video yeah i'm sure you're probably going to enjoy it so here we go the title of my talk today is removing mental malware malware as in computer malware where somebody writes a program and sticks it on their computer by way of a virus or something. It'll be the mental version of that. Step one is, do you want to know the truth? If you really want to know the truth, that requires you to put everything you believe at risk, to question everything you assume, to question everything you think you've already figured out. Do we believe what we're taught? Do we believe what we hear everyone around us telling us, what our teachers tell us, what our parents tell us? what the community around us tells us. You may have some 
pet theory, some conspiracy theory, or some weird theory that other people think are weird. And if you found out the truth, you might find you were actually wrong. That your theory was bogus. And if you are not open to that possibility, then you're not really going to the truth. On the other hand, there may be somebody who says, well, I believe what the mainstream believes, and I believe what everyone around me believes, and I'm not going to consider anything that sounds unusual or weird. They want to know the truth. Wanting to know the truth requires risking what you already have and what you're already comfortable with, which is why most people don't want to know the truth. Assuming you actually want to know the truth, how do you get there? By using the scientific method or the scientific process. I'm a huge fan of the scientific process. I think it's the only way to reach rational conclusions. However, I'm also a huge critic of a lot of people who stick the label scientist on themselves. The scientific process, in a nutshell, is you take in evidence, you take in data, and from it you try to extrapolate an explanation of reality, or pieces of reality. You try to get a worldview that actually matches the world outside of you. And sometimes you find out, whoops, well, that data made it look like this, but now this data makes it... And so you have to test your theories and sometimes throw them out. A lot of people who wear the label scientists and pretend they like science, what they do is take in a lot of evidence, look at the stuff that already fits what they already believe, and the other stuff, that's just weird. We're, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. So by the scientific process, I don't mean come to the results that are now usually labeled under science. I mean the actual scientific process of look at the world, take in all the evidence you can, and then try to figure out reality from that. Even if the evidence is weird and disturbing and goes against what you already want. Another problem that stops people from using the scientific process is when it starts to point at a conclusion that they don't like. They will often bail out. If you start to see a rational examination of the evidence pointing towards you were totally wrong about something, most people will bail out around the other way because they're invested in what they already believe in. Now, this is especially true if it's something you believed in your whole life and worked on. Maybe if you've devoted your career to something and somebody comes along and says, I want you to consider this and rationally look at the evidence and find out that your entire career is based on a gigantic lie. There is a huge motivation to not look at that, to not use the scientific process. That's what each one of us has to look out for inside our own heads. Are there any walls we put up because we think, I don't really like where that evidence and logic is leading me, I'm just going to kind of stick a wall in there and pretend I didn't see that. That's the comfortable easy thing. There are lots of conclusions people don't want to reach. There are lots and lots of conspiracy theories, and when people say conspiracy theory, they're usually bashing it, and what they usually mean is, I don't want to consider the possibility that the explanation for this event that happened is something that's really going to creep me out. So I'm going to call it a conspiracy theory. That is not scientific, and that is not rational. When you have things happen, like what happened in Boston in 9-11, I don't even bother telling people what I think very often, or arguing the evidence. I just go to people and say, do you look at this evidence, did you approach this wanting to know what happened, or did you approach this determined that this will be the conclusion you reach no matter what? And that's most people, because most people don't want to know the truth. And the only people who ever move it forward are the ones who say, yeah, I want to know the whole truth. It might be unpleasant, and it might totally mess up my view of the world, and might mess up my life and everything else, but uh, yeah, truth's got to come first. Assuming we want to know the truth, and assuming we know the scientific process, why do we come to so many different conclusions? What messes things up for us? Checking for warped perceptions. The primary problem in the world is not greed, and it is not hatred, and it is not malice. It's the fact that people's perception of reality is hugely twisted by things they're taught, by things they hear all around them their upbringing, I think it's pretty self-evident that if you have one huge group of people who means well and wants truth and justice to prevail and sees reality as it is, and another huge group of people who wants truth and justice to prevail and they see reality as it is, they probably wouldn't be trying to murder each other. Which means the underlying problem in every war 
is not the hatred, even though there's obvious surface animosity while they're trying to kill each other. It's warping of perceptions. At least one side, and I would say both sides every time, their perceptions have been warped such that they think trying to kill that other guy is necessary for humanity. And the guy over there thinks trying to kill them is necessary for humanity. And if the one side or both sides whose perceptions were mangled could fix their own perceptions, the war stops. Because they suddenly realize, okay, you think you're the good guy and I think I'm the good guy. If we both understand reality, we'll probably stop killing each other. The problem is, this is something I refer to as mental lenses, things that are inside our head that warp the way we see the world. Everybody thinks he sees the world as it is. It's impossible not to. You think you see reality, you think you have a pretty good grip on reality. There, there may be things you say, well, I don't know about this, and I don't know about that, but I have a general grasp on what's going on. Nobody thinks his own perception is messed up. Now, everybody can point to all sorts of other people. And pointing out that somebody else is delusional doesn't make them not delusional, even if they are. The only thing that moves humanity forward is if somebody dares to look inside their own head and say, are there things that are messing up my perception of reality and making me do stupid stuff? Because the only one you can actually change is yourself. Unfortunately, most people would much rather shoot at other people than say, maybe my belief system is based on some bogus ideas. So for the past 10,000 years or whatever, we've just been killing each other because I'd rather kill you than think about my own paradigm. Not a good situation, but it is changing with events like this. Why would our perceptions be warped? When I talk about mental malware, I mean stuff that was put there intentionally to mess you up. Most of what we believe is passed on to us from our parents, our teachers, our friends, people around us, our society as a whole, the media, all the things we're exposed to, I do not believe that everybody out there telling a lie is trying to tell a lie. I believe the vast majority are just passing on lies that they were taught because they don't know any better. When parents teach their children stupid things that they learn, they're not thinking, ha, 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 I'm going to get my kids to this one. They think the same reality to the next generation. When teachers teach the same garments that they were taught that's untrue and based on a bunch of false paradigms, they're not trying to be nasty, they're just passing on their own misunderstanding. And this is why, number one, is important, we have to want to know the truth. Because if someone who cares about you and loves you is telling you this and they sound so sure of themselves, the hardest thing in the world is to think, well, you know, Maybe you're totally wrong, Mom and Dad. You know, I know you mean well, I don't think you're trying to fake me out, but I think you and everyone around me might be totally wrong about that. You know, another reason people don't want the truth is, if you're the only one who believes something, it's really uncomfortable. I suspect people in this crowd know that a lot more than the general public. Not being in the majority is an uncomfortable place to be, which tends to push us into a majority that all to feel confident that together they believe the wrong destructive things. For the purpose of this talk, what matters is getting it out of your head. Those of you who know about the depression indoctrination system and like John Taylor Gatto's work, you can very much see the openly admitted intentional design of programming people to be easily controlled and, and unthinking machines. It doesn't even matter if you got these four perceptions by way of misinformed but benevolent sources or actual psychos trying to control you. Because either way, if they're stuck in your head and messing with your perception, then they need to be fixed. The primary example of malware that I talk about is the malware revolving around concepts of government and law and politics and authority and crime and all the terminology and all the thought processes that tentacles come out from the belief in authority. It's really easy to point to some bad guy, to point to some tyrant, to point to some regime and say, that's the problem, they're scary, they're bad, let's go do something about them. The main problem isn't the bad guys. The bad guys will keep being bad guys. The main problem is the power they get from the warping of the perceptions of their victims. And if you fix the perception of their victims, the control freaks don't have any power. Everybody believes in government. They believe it's real, they believe in the law, they believe in authority, 
and they have all these perceptions that they think are based on reality. That is a great sign that you have somebody controlling what's in here. But if you're convinced that it's law and it's government and it's authority, literally people feel profound moral guilt at doing something that doesn't hurt anybody but disobeys the group of people who claim to be government, who claim to have the right to rule. I love the term law-abiding taxpayer because it's people proudly displaying their malware for all the world to see. I am proud that I give my money to a bunch of crooks and I do whatever they tell me. Law-abiding taxpayer. That is all it means. Lots and lots of history is good people who are taught to believe the lie of authority, either just spectating and doing nothing, or actively helping to dominate, oppress, or even kill their fellow man because authority told them to. If that's what I mean by the fact that the problem is not the psychos. There's only one reason we know the name Adolf Hitler, and it wasn't because of Adolf Hitler. It was because lots of people in Germany believed in the thing called authority. And so if the guy is in a certain position and has a certain job description, and he tells you to do something, well, you do it. You follow orders. You enforce the law. If they didn't believe that, what could one goofball with a stupid mustache possibly have done on his own? Same thing everywhere. Red China, Soviet Union, you can go anywhere you want. The mass oppression was not because all the individuals doing it thought, you know, today I just want to go hurt somebody. It's because they were raised with the malware of authoritarianism and government and law and all these concepts that go together so that they literally feel guilty about doing what they know is right. The Stanley Milgram did experiments which totally show that this applies to Americans as much as anybody else. We know what is right and wrong, and we will do the wrong thing if a perceived authority tells us to. That's the horrendous punchline. And I highly suggest everybody go check out this. It should be required. People should be forced to read that book. Stanley Milgram's book is called Obedience to Authority, and it goes all through his experiments, which is really creepy, but it's an outstanding expose on mental malware and the destruction it leads to uh, making good people do really nasty evil stuff. Even inside the freedom movement, because the malware is so lodged in most people's heads, even the vast majority of people say, I want freedom, they don't recognize their own malware. They don't even check for it. Because they think, problems in Washington, D.C. Those guys are bad guys. And yeah, they are bad guys, but they're not the problem. And we have to go do something to that. And whenever that's the focus, you lose, because you miss the underlying problem of the world. The entire idea that we have to do something to the ruling class, whether we have to vote in people who will sit back and go petition them, we have to go have a protest, we have to have a revolution. <clears throat> there is nothing you can do to the control freaks who pretend to be government that will fix reality. As long as that malware is in their heads, it doesn't matter what you do to the current ruling class. Elections and petitions, even revolutions, they're pointless because that isn't the problem. If the problem is inside your head, shooting somebody in Washington isn't going to fix it. But if you imagine a world in which the malware is gone and tomorrow 300 million people wake up and say, I don't really feel a need to give a bunch of my money to them. In fact, I don't feel a need to use their crummy currency that keeps going down in value. I don't feel the moral obligation to obey their arbitrary stupid commands and I definitely don't want to fuel their war machine in their police state. So, yeah, now, if one person does that, out come the jack boots and he gets stomped and killed and thrown in the cage. If 300 million do it, we're done. The end. As long as you're focused on doing something to the rulers, nothing fixes because they're not the problem. And all of their power comes from the malware in our heads, our perceptions that they have the right to do this, that their commands are law, that when they say, give me money, it is robbery, it's taxation. These ideas in the heads of the victims are the problem. But what it comes down to is when people understand the malware, it goes away. Don't be scared of chaos and anarchy. Be scared of the guy who says, put me in charge and I will fix the world. He is not your master. You are your master. All righty. Wow, this, this reminds me of the quote um, 
Today's revolutionaries tend to become tomorrow's dictators. And it's all about the malware. Like Larkin Rose just said. And I'm going to do my best to take his advice at the moment. You know, the little advice that came up on the screen that says, don't take sides, remove your own malware. So seeing is I'm about to go totally into an objective mode about this. Um, anybody who feels that, well, you know, like Larkin Rose said, you know, people don't want to know the truth, you know. Or like that Rambo movie said, you can't handle the truth. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Rambo. It might have been something else, but pretty sure it was Rambo. Anyway, be honest with yourself at the moment. And if you really feel that you can't handle that logical middle ground, looking at, at both sides logically type of a discussion, well... This is your chance to, you know, hit the stop button, close the window, you know, whatever it is that you're wanting to do to, you know, to just, you know, this is like the, the, the point of, of, of no return. Once, once we get past, past this point, you know, you have your, your opportunity, you've been given the disclaimers right now. So if, um, you know, you think that these sorts of discussions are going to, get you butt hurt and send you off on a rage and shaking your fist at the keyboard and giving you a migraine for the rest of the day or night or whatever time of the day just when you're watching this then this is your exit point right here you know this is this is you know the the the, the last station of the proverbial train you can you can get off here if you want um, but otherwise if you're looking to expand your mind a bit then keep watching because you're probably actually going to like what I have to say. Of course, some people who aren't going to like what I'm about to say are going to continue to watch anyway, and that's just a nice steaming cup of, oh well, but um, here we go. For those of you who have the patriotic malware and by that i mean thinking you're being loyal to your country when really you are unknowingly being loyal to the corporate machine um and if you've always loved einstein i'm totally about to ruin einstein for you heroism on command senseless violence and all the lone the yeah, loathsome nonsense that goes by the name of patriotism how passionately i hate them so if you're one of those people that would look at a statement like that and be like oh my god he's an anti-american or da 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 or whatever but you you loved and and respected einstein prior to that then i just completely ruined that for you and i'm honestly i'm really not sorry for having done that because the truth is a bad shit really is get into that objective mode the malware starts crying no i can't think of any other possibilities outside my paradigm get it away like Plato's cave coming out of the cave, the light's gonna blind. Oh, you know, it burns, it burns. Oh. <laughs> okay, so maybe some of you are experiencing a little bit of eye burning right now, but this makes another good point. Um, in society, we try to to appease everybody else. That's what we're taught to do. If people don't appease us, we don't appease them. Oh, naughty, naughty, you're doing something wrong, or they're doing something wrong, or whatever. Um, that's why there's the whole thing of people want to just have the freedom to be themselves, but when they're being themselves, people only love it until you say one little thing that they disagree with, Then, oh, you're a horrible person. You, We disagree on that one thing, so... I totally have lost all respect for you. You're a horrible person. Fuck you. You know. And that's that's the way the way people react. So, you know, I like to tell people I personally think that if Hitler had openly stated on record that the sky is blue, I think we'd all be insisting the sky's purple right now. And anybody who acknowledged the elephant in the room that it's blue, 
people be like, you're a Nazi, and you're a eugenicist, and you hate Jews, and you're anti-Semitic, and yeah, 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 yeah. Because we never pay attention to the message. We only pay attention to the messenger. And that's because we're, we're not taught to think critically. We're taught to defend all these belief systems and stuff. So, okay. Now, I love the Oath Keepers for the most part. They are doing an awesome job, and I am really glad they are there. And I love our veterans, and my dad is a Vietnam vet, and my grandfather was a World War II vet. Um, I have a lot of respect for veterans, Oath Keepers, so on and so forth. And I think that these are a very key, instrumental, important aspect of humanity's awakening process. So I appreciate you guys. I love most of what you're doing. I mean, obviously, I don't enjoy the corporate scumbaggery of, you know, sending people over to, like, blow up civilians and jack the resources. But, um, you know, I don't appreciate the military-industrial complex, but I do appreciate our veterans and Oath Keepers and so on and so forth. So this little video in the corner here is an Oath Keeper video. And um, now, I don't think, I'd, I'd like to think <laughs> that these guys do not speak for all Oath Keepers everywhere, but what I'm about to show you is a part of the, the mental malware. Um, apparently, they're in Kentucky or something with this. I mean, there's some sort of crazy law that if you do anything inappropriate, to the American flag that gets jail time. Now, we live in a society where we say, okay, here's this piece of cloth, and only one perspective about this piece of cloth is valid. If you dare to invoke your freedom to have any other perspective about that piece of cloth, then you're just a horrible person and you deserve to be put in a cage or killed or whatever, so on and so forth. We often forget that Hitler rose to power talking all about, you know, the freedom of the people and patriotism and yay Germany, let's make this a strong nation and I'm all for the people. And then, you know, look what ended up happening. Just like the quote before, you know, um, today's revolutionaries tend to become tomorrow's dictators. Most people don't know that Hitler was Christian. Most people don't know that originally Hitler was very well intended, but he's kind of like Anakin Skywalker, you know, and here comes Palpatine and Anakin turns to the dark side, becomes Darth Vader, and, you know, all that shit. So, you know, that's, that's kind of, kind of what happened with Hitler. It was very tragic. Um, the very elites, the Illuminatis or whatever you want to call them, he was trying to fight those guys, but he got corrupted by those guys. It's the exact same story of Star Wars. You've got Palpatine, who is the who became Chancellor, who was also the big bad Darth Dark Lord of the Sith, and nobody knew it. So you have that element in the Republic, undermining the Republic from the inside out. So here comes arrogant, hot headed, pissed off, naive little Anakin Skywalker being totally manipulated by you know, this creepy old guy who's the chancellor, who's, you know, he's like, I love the Republic, and I love this, and bunnies and kittens, and da, da, da. And, you know, all the people are pausing, yay, you know. And, um, you know, then, of course, he corrupts Anakin, takes down the Jedi, um, you know, implants a state of, of martial law you know, rises up with this whole empire business and the whole Senate's cheering, oh, yes, yeah, security and blah, blah, blah. And Padme just looks at it, shakes her head in disgust and says, this is how liberty dies, in a round of applause. And that's a lot of the sort of stuff we're, we're seeing right now. We got to understand the people that took down the, the Republic in Star Wars, most of them were very good patriotic, kind-hearted, well-intended people who basically got scammed. And in this Oath Keeper video, what we see, there is somebody who apparently broke this law, quote-unquote, and they were stepping on the American flag or, or, or whatever it was. And so all these Oath Keepers are out there like, yeah, you're not allowed 
to believe you're, you're not allowed to have your awakening process and see that everything is corporate control. You're not allowed to get mad at that. And so you're not allowed to view the flag as a corporate entity and, you know, vent on that. You're, you're not, you're not allowed to do that. You have to somehow enter the matrix and have a USB cord plugged in your head and psychically download the belief systems and experience of patriots and veterans and so on and so forth. And, and just automatically be able to relate to what it's like to fight for your country. Look, if you haven't fought for your country, you have no fucking idea as to what fighting for your country is like. So it's like, with that said, if you have fought for your country, then why are you expecting other people to have any clue whatsoever as to, as to what's going on in your head? You know what I mean? They can't understand. You've been there. They haven't yet <laughs> you're expecting them to understand really and you're getting mad and wanting to throw them in a freaking cage when they can't psychically download all your knowledge about what it's like to fight for your country i mean it's ridiculous a flag in the most literal sense is just a piece of cloth and if you want to go quantum with it it's energy it's made up of the same energy that everything else is made up of so what do we do we value our view our perspective, which is all we can have about anything, just our own perspective. We value our perspective of a piece of cloth as taking priority over human life and human liberty. Oh, that guy did something with that cloth that I don't like because I have a different view. He views it as a sign of corporate Nazism taking over America, and, and he's not allowed to fight for freedom in his own way that way. He's not allowed to rage against the globalists in any way that I disapprove of. If I disapprove of, well, we need to throw him in a cage, just like the globalists would do. We need to obey the law, the law. They keep saying in this video, oh, it's against the law, the law. It's like, guys, no offense, love y'all, but you're sounding like a bunch of globalists. So I'm going to play this video so you can see just what a bunch of globalists these Oath Keepers are sounding like. No disrespect or anything. I'm just calling a spade a spade. Here we go. Yeah. I'm not sure what his name is, but he felt the need to take the American flag, desecrate it, by putting it down on his driveway and walk on the Stephanie. According to federal, state law, and Kentucky state law, and the post that the law does a violation of the gift law to do so. Some people wrap themselves up in the First Amendment and say they have a right to express their feelings and a right to say whatever they want to. This is true, but you can't go out and act on something that is against the law. What he did is against the law, it's not political. Notice, he's not talking about morality. It's against the law. It's against the globalist law. We're fighting the globalists, but we're, do, we're acting like the globalists. It's against the globalist law. So you will be punished and thrown in a cage and have your liberties taken away, not because you actually did something wrong, but because it's against the almighty law. That is exactly the mentality that our forefathers warned us about. Arrest this man for having a different perspective. Heil Hitler. He has different perspective from the Reich. We must put him in a cage. We must lock him away in the camps. That's right. Man, a public announcement I want to make, and I hope every single one of y'all carries this message with you. Every one of you standing here today is a true definition of patriot. Stand together, united. This isn't a time of disaster or war or anything of the sort. There's been no violence committed. But the simple statement is this. You may step on one of our American flags, but guess what? Take a look down this road. Take a look down that road. Now, look at all these t-shirts around you. You can step on one of us, but we will come back and multiply. You have your right to your opinion, to your beliefs, and to your voice, but guess what? We'll make ours louder. Because you know why? This is America. 
So let's see if I've got this right. Okay. If someone is in the beginning of their awakening process and they're they're coming out of it out of extreme ignorance and they're they're in the beginning of the, of their awakening process, they're not allowed to be in the beginning of their awakening process. So when they learn and and by the way, you guys might not know the pledge of allegiance was actually written by a communist who was trying to sell American flags. Most people do not know shit about their history. Not shit. They know nothing because they only know what they've been taught in school. I learned more from the Common Core. I'm the retarded. I'm the Common Core student. Ooh. And let us also not forget that our educational system now is based on the Prussian system and the father of the Prussian system is the father of neo-Nazism and that system was used to successfully indoctrinate the German people just as it has been used to successfully indoctrinate the American people and people around the world and yeah it's it's an inconvenient truth nobody wants to hear that but you know let's look at it logically what kind of a world do you really want to create are you looking to just justify your ego and recreate the same old bullshit just like, well, I don't like the tyranny because I'm not in charge, but, you know, if I'm in charge of the tyranny, then it's fine. It's like what George W. Bush said. <laughs> I wouldn't mind living in a dictatorship. <laughs> like I'm the dictator. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The girls are cool. Yeah. I am going to help. <laughs> you know. So, yeah, it's like, it, it's, it's the same freaking attitude here. You know, it's like, well, you know. I don't like it when my freedoms are trampled on. And you got to respect my pace of learning because I'm human. And I wasn't born knowing everything. And and I got the right to learn at my own volition. And you don't have the right to tell me I don't. Okay, you can, you can say all, all that. But when it comes to respecting somebody else's pace of learning, of course, now you're going to go and do exactly what the globalists taught you to do. You're going to go and, and act all Nazistic and... Uh, be the change for changing the world into more of the scumbaggery that it's been without even realizing that you're doing it because you're in a state of ignorance. Ignorance means ignore ants to willfully ignore information. Most of these truthers and whatever, you know, they're well intended, don't get me wrong, but most of these truthers, they act like just because they've learned a few pieces of knowledge, oh, I'm awake, I'm I'm outside of the matrix now, and all you sheep out there, ooh, you're not a sheep, you, you are not awake, but I am awake, bow to me, because I am the guru here, and I am got the flag in one hand, and the cross in the other, and a big penis, and going, I am liberty, you will listen to me, I am awake. That is as stupid as being diagnosed with cancer, and going, I know I have cancer, so now that I know I have cancer, I don't have the cancer. I am magically cured. Jesus Christ or Allah or whoever has come down from on high and cured me. So now that I know I have the cancer, I am cured of the cancer. But all of you sheep out there, out there, that do not know you have the cancer, well, you're, you are still sick. And I must shun you and, and, and act like a cancer myself and put you in a cage and kill you and you know all, all that stuff. But yes, I am almighty and supreme. And that's why you see all these different factions in the truth movement that bicker and bitch and argue with each other exactly like the corporate factions, the elites, the Illuminati, the, the globalists, the cabal, the corporatocracy, whatever you want to call them. Buzzwords are freaking relevant. They're just buzzwords. Who cares what you use? Call them late for freaking dinner. I don't give a shit. Anyway, they're all fighting with each other, and it's the exact same thing that's happening in the truth movements because it's all the same mentality. We don't know what we don't know, okay? Because human nature is not geared towards absolutely good or absolutely bad. Here's what it's geared toward. To adapt for survival so if you've got a child that's raised in a benevolent which means a good or positive you know a a balanced sane environment then that child will adapt to that environment 
and be benevolent as a means of survival. Because if it does not adapt to that benevolent environment, it will not be able to survive. Same with a malevolent environment. The child will adapt. The child does not come into this planet with a full hard drive up here, knowing everything about everything. It learns from its environment. Grown-ups always say to each other, stop acting like a toddler. You're acting so immature. Where do you think the toddlers learned it? I mean, do you think the toddlers were born knowing how to act like that? No. They're looking around, okay, how do I adapt to my environment? Oh, look at how mommy and daddy are acting. I'm going to try to emulate it. Oh, look what I see on the TV. I'm going to try to emulate it. Oh, look what I see here, there. I'm going to try to emulate it. That's all they know how to do is adapt to their environment. So when little kids get all, nya, 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 it's because they saw mommy and daddy or auntie and uncle or somebody on the TV or whoever or whatever doing that. And so now they're trying to imitate it. It doesn't look exactly the way the adults would do it because little kids are not as articulate and they don't have as much experience and they don't speak as well. So they're not going to sound like adults when they throw their little tantrums. But adults <laughs> sound more like little kids when they throw their tantrums. But it's because the little kids are emulating the adults and the grown-ups do not want to acknowledge that because we don't want to take responsibility. We would rather bicker and bitch and shake our fists and feel all self-righteous and justified and dehumanize everybody else, punish everybody else, put them in cages, kill everybody else. Because guess what? That's what we were taught to do. So I was taught to do that. You were taught to do that. Everybody was taught to do that. That's the society we live in. Very Nazistic, very corrupt. And we were all raised in that environment and forced to try to adapt to that environment in order to survive. Well, if you can think critically or when you're willing to learn how to, you know, it's like Jesus said, make yourself an empty cup. He's talking about paradigms. That's why he said, let the children come to me because they're empty cups. They haven't been indoctrinated. They haven't been jaded yet. So you can either get completely butthurt by what I'm saying, and I'm not going to judge you for it because you only know what your environment has taught you, whatever that environment is. Maybe you had a rough childhood. Maybe your parents, you know, they did their best, but man, maybe not quite as well as you'd have liked them. Maybe you inherited a lot of their bad habits and attitudes and whatever. Maybe you're going through post-traumatic stress because you were in Vietnam or Iraq or wherever. And then, you know, maybe before that you didn't exactly have it easy. Maybe you always had to bust your ass for everything and there's a lot of suffering involved. Now, don't get me wrong. Hard work is good work. But hard work should be challenging, not suffering. You don't have to, you know, put yourself on, on the cross, so to speak, and suffer in, in order to say, oh, I've, I've done good in my life, I'm responsible. That's, that's not responsibility, it's not adulthood, that's like sadomasochism. And we live in a sadomasochistic world. So, you can either reflect on this, or you can get really butthurt. Oh, that Dave guy, he's, oh, he's a communist, he's a, he's a seasoned Illuminati agent, he's a psyop, he's a, he's a douchebag, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, blah, 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 willful ignorance mode, I'm just, no, Dave's bad, don't listen to him, turn him off, no, 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 blah, 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 I don't hear you, Dave's evil, shut up. So, you can do that, and that's fine if you want to do that, because if you're doing that, you literally don't know how to not do that. That's like literally all you've been raised to to know how to do. So until or unless the time comes for your paradigm shift, how can I blame you without being a hypocrite myself? So I respect your right to think and feel and do and express as you see fit. Just as I respect the right for the people in that video to be out there and do exactly what they're doing. Because they have set this perfect little example that has ended up with this video and this discussion. And we can only paradigm shift if we have discussions, if we talk about things. We have to, you know, have a dialogue, as William Black might say. So, yeah, you know. So, this opens a discussion. So, I'm not pointing at the Oath Keepers going, oh, pooty poo on you. You're so naughty. No, I'm not doing that at all. Like, like it said in the Larkin Rose video, don't take sides. I'm not taking sides. I'm just 
looking at all the cards on the table, so to speak, and going, hmm, and, you know, just kind of talking about that. Because, you know, discussions are good. So these sort of events, you know, they open up the line for discussion and they get people thinking. So I'm not judging what happened here is bad. I'm not saying, oh, those naughty oath keepers. I'm not saying any of that. This is, this is actually good that this happened because it opens up that, that line of discussion, which hopefully continues to encourage critical thinking. So whichever side of the argument you might be on, I, I respect, you know, both sides to, to have their, you know, what they think about it, whatever they want to express. But I am suggesting that there might be other options than just two that you might want to consider expanding beyond your box. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Comfort zone means you're used to it. Expansion, not used to it. Expansion, uncomfortable. But expansion is good. So that is food for thought. Thank you for watching, listening, and uh, whatever. And uh, peace out. Have a good day, night, um, wherever it is uh, that you are. And uh, catch you next time. God bless, Allah bless, universe bless, uh, Yahweh, <laughs> whatever. Blessings to you all, period. And have a good day.